early as 1902. There was founded the Academia de Arquitectura y Agrimensura de Filipinas, otherwise known as AAAF. Members of the this organization were Guillermo Gardiner as president, Arcadio Arellano as vice president, Jose Perez Seguenza as the secretary, Tomas Arguelles and Jose Paras as directors. And then in 1903, AAAF changed its name to Academia de Ingeniería, Arquitectura y Agrimensura de Filipinas. The organization was changed by the coming in of the engineers. The first engineers and architects law was passed, which was called Act 2985, which was prepared by AIAAF. And then in 1933, the Philippine Architects Society, or PAS, was formed out of AIAAF. September 2, 1946, PAS changed its name to Philippine Institute of Architects and Planners. And subsequently, the planners was dropped and it was therefore named the Philippine Institute of Architects. In 1948, PIA presented to the president of the country, Elpidio Quirino, a resolution professional service of its members to assist the national government in its public works projects under the War Damage Commission. At about this time, 15 members organized the League of Philippine Architects, LPA.
there existed three architectural organizations we needed to unite but somehow could not there was the Philippine Institute of Architects who had its history that can be traced back to 1902 and was a member of the International Association of Architecture known as UIA and it of course did not want to uh, give up its identity or its prestigious history. But then there was a handful of members of PIA which later became the League of Philippine Architects that at a certain point their membership even exceeded that of the PIA. And then the third organization was the Organization of Government Architects known as, uh, as uh, AFGA. And of course, they had a, some distinct needs, interests, and uh, wanted certain benefits. All that is unique to the government architects. And so these were the three organizations that many tried to unite during that period. They, there were many efforts that came into this. There was the organization of the Council of Filipino Architects, the Philippine Architects Council, uh, many fellowships that came in, meetings, dialogues. Unfortunately, none of the efforts uh, prospered for so long. For the celebration of the 50th anniversary of the profession, the young architects organized the celebration which was called Ad Hoc Committee on the Celebration of the 50th Anniversary of Architecture. All the big names in the profession were present. It was like as if there was no, there was only one organization. The, there was no talk of the three organizations separately. So in 1973, when I was president of the League of Philippine Architects, I took aside the then president of the Philippine Institute of Architects, Tito Nagpil, invited him, him to a formal negotiation in an effort to unite the profession. And each of us agreed to bring along two other of our members. We invited also the government architects of Afghan into the negotiation. And so there started formal negotiations that took place weekly in the uh, architectural center of the Philippines. And it took the better part of more than one year to negotiate. Then the panel of negotiators from the three organizations were appointed. The president of PIA was Ariston Nakpil. The board appointed him together with Otilio Arellano and myself as the members of the panel of negotiators. For APGA, there was Deogracias Atienza, Benjamin Miamo, and Alfredo Tumpalan. For LPA, there was Adilberto Florentino, Luis Quiang, and Ricardo Poblete. And the nine members met at the uh, Architects Club. It took a long time for us to be meeting each other. We lay out proposals, and then we bring back to our boards. I think it took more than a year of every week, Fridays, that we go back and forth, architects club, then back to the board, then we say what is, is discussed, then it is discussed in our boards. And I remember one time that in answer to the questions of our board, that I had to say that you mean to say, if you are going to ask me to marry you, I'll have to give a list of my assets, my assets, my assets, my assets. December 10, there was the unanimous approval of the board resolution 
joint point board resolution of APCA LPA and PIA, which laid down the objectives, guidelines, and principles for the integration. And finally, on December 13, there was the ratification of the APCA LPA and PIA joint board resolution in a joint membership meeting held at the Architectural Center Club in Makati. And after this, of course, there was an agreement to form the Ad Hoc Commission. But then, that is another story. After the ratification of the membership of the joint resolution, uh, the panel of negotiators formed an ad hoc commission inhibiting themselves from the leadership of that ad hoc commission, although we were members there. No. And uh, they were tasked primarily to formulate the constitution and bylaws that would now form the united organization. And so they did succeed in forming the constitution and bylaws, naming the new organization as the United Architects of the Philippines. documents, evidences, and papers that were associated with the negotiation that took place for more than one year. In June 14, 1974, there was the Presidential Decree 1276 urging the professionals to integrate. So you will see that we integrated first and then we were urged by the government to integrate. It is not correct to assume as it has been pictured previously that it was the government who dictated on us to unite. 